Chapter 7, Gases, Liquids, and Solids Believe it or not, we have learned a lot about chemistry. We have learned electron configurations of atoms. We have learned the formation of chemical bonds through the interaction of electrons. We have learned how to draw Lewis structures, how to predict the geometry of our molecule, which is called molecular geometry, and we have learned how to predict the polarity of a molecule. The purpose of learning all of those is to study the behavior, the properties of substances, be it physical or chemical. Starting from chapter 7, we begin to work on understanding the behavior, the properties of substances. And chapter 7 focuses on the physical behavior of substances. Talking about physical properties of matter, here are the most common ones that are used to describe substances. Volume and shape, we know what they are. Density, we learn density in chapter two. Compressibility, this is something new for us. Compressibility talks about the change in volume in, in response to the change from a pressure. When pressure changes, how will the volume respond? Thermal expansion. Thermal expansion talks about the volume changes in response to the changes in temperature. When temperature goes higher or lower, how would the, temp uh, the volume of our substance change? That's called a thermal, thermal expansion. Now, this slide provides us a comparison of the common physical properties mentioned on the last slide among solids, liquids, and gases. For solid state, it has definite volume and definite shape. It has high density usually. It has small compressibility. When you press a solid, the volume changes is very minimal. It has very small thermal expansion. Yes, when you heat it up, the volume may expand a little bit, but very small for solids. Liquid, liquid has definite volume, but indefinite shape. Liquid usually takes the shape of its container. We know that. We talked about this way earlier in this semester. Liquid also has high density. Liquid also has small compressibility. Okay, you cannot compress a liquid and it has small thermal expansion. Volume changes, the uh, temperature changes, the volume may change, but minimal. Now gas state, it has indefinite volume and indefinite shape. Low density, the density of gas is significantly lower than the liquids and solid. Large compressibility, you can compress a, a, a gases, a gas substance, and it has moderate thermal expansion. Okay. The volume will respond, obviously, significantly towards the change in temperature. Well, these are the common physical properties of the three states. However, in this class, knowing this is not our purpose. We know pretty much all of this already. Our job is to understand why there is such a big difference in these physical behaviors for the three states. In order to do that, we will have to introduce a new theory that is called kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic molecular theory, there are five statements talks about composition of a matter. So number one, it tells you that matter is composed of tiny particles, be it atoms, ions, molecules. These tiny particles are assumed that 
they have definite and characteristic sizes that do not change. Well, basically, statement number one is telling you matter is composed of tiny particles. Statement number two tells you that those tiny particles are not stand, staying there, not doing anything. The particles inside matter are in constant motion. Therefore, they have kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy that matter processes because of movement. And when particles move, they, may, they, they carry energy. That energy is called kinetic energy. So the first two statements say that matter is composed of small particles. Those particles are in constant motion. Therefore, they have kinetic energy. The faster they move, the higher the energy, the higher the kinetic energy. Well, the particles inside a matter are in constant motion. They also interact with each other. Particles interact with one another through either attractions and or repulsions. Therefore, they have potential energy. Potential energy is the stored energy that the matter processes as a result of the particle's position, condition, and or composition. Even though this statement tells you that potential energy includes attractions and repulsions, however, most of the times, it is the attraction that is the major part of the potential energy. Repulsion will not become significant unless the particle gets too close. Particles normally do not get that close. They will repel each other. They will just move away from each other. So overall, the attraction is the primary cause for potential energy. So now combining statement number two, statement number three from kinetic molecular theory, we realize that particles are moving around. So they are moving ar around so that they have kinetic energy. And also at the same time, they are held together. When they move around, they have a tendency to move away from each, each other. Kinetic energy is trying to keep particles staying farther apart from each other. Well, at the same time, there is another energy that is called a potential energy, which is trying to attract, hold particles stay together. So these are the two different forms of energies, kinetic and the potential. They are trying to do two opposite things to the particles. Kinetic energy is trying to make a chaos. Potential energy is trying to keep everything in order. Statement number four in the theory, the kinetic energy of the particles increases as the temperature increases. So when temperature goes higher, particles move faster. As a matter of fact, temperature is a overall reflection of the movement of particles. When particles move faster, temperature is higher. So higher temperature, higher kinetic energy. Number five, the particles in the system transfer energy to each other through elastic collisions. What are elastic collisions? Elastic collisions are collisions that do not lose any energy. Here is an example of this bouncing ball experiment. Okay, On the top, when you release your hand, the ball falls down, hit the first ball. This collision, if it doesn't lose any energy, the energy is transferred from the falling ball to the next ball, next ball, next ball, to the last ball. The last ball is going to rise now. If there is no energy loss through this whole process, the last ball will reach to the height, the same height as the one you reached at the beginning. And again, if there is no energy loss, 
this whole process will go back and forth, never stops. That kind of collision is called elastic collision. This statement is not a big deal for us to use this kinetic molecular theory to explain the physical behaviors of substances later on. However, this statement has to be here, otherwise the whole theory doesn't work. Particles collide all the time. If there is an energy loss, then every time they collide, they lose some energy gradually, none of them will, all the particles will stop moving. So in order to keep the whole theory correct, they have to add this statement here. All right, there are five statements in the kinetic molecular theory. You should know all five of them, okay? The core of this theory is statement number two and number three. Particles have kinetic theory. No, 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 particles have kinetic energy, an energy that is trying to make a chaos inside the particle within the matter with all the particles. Number three, particles have potential energy, an energy that is trying to keep everything in order, that is trying to hold all the atoms, all the particles stay together. Now remember the purpose of introducing the kinetic molecular theory. The purpose is to explain the behavior, the physical behavior of the three states, solid, liquids, and gas. Well, the differences among them can be explained by the relative magnitudes of kinetic energy and the potential energy, as I said just a minute ago. These two forms of energy, energies are critical. They are the core of the kinetic and molecular theory. Kinetic energy is a disruptive force that tends to make the particles of a system increasingly independent of one another. They try to move away from each other. The faster they move, the likely that they will move away from each other. Well, potential energy is a cohesive force that tends to cause order and stability among the particles of a system. It is trying to hold all the particles staying together. Do not move too far away from me. Stay here. So there are two forces. These two energy forms are fighting against each other. Depending who is winning or not, the particles behave differently. And that will be the topic of our next episode. Understanding the behavior or the differences in the behavior of solids, liquids, and gases.